Okay, guys, I'm using internet, internet connection in a hotel room, hotel internet. So pray for the session. I just got in about an hour and a half ago. So pray for the session. I ask the Holy Spirit to bless us and that the internet will be strong and we don't lose internet, perfect internet connection for the glory of the Father, Son, and Spirit. So, okay, guys, get ready. As you can see, it's a different topic from the one I thought I was going to do. I'm hating this person. Who's this person? Man? Oh, my goodness. That's what I need to see. All right. Well, he's small anyway. Okay. You ready? <clears throat> We're going to have a lot of topics to talk about if you're prayed up. So I'm in a hotel room. <clears throat> And we're hoping that the internet connection will be strong and the Holy Spirit will be pleased to work through me. Holy Spirit, use me as this mouthpiece. Now, help me out a little bit, guys. <clears throat> you have men's large and T-shirts and you have children's large, right? So when you go to children's section, like boys' section, they have large for children. And then you have men's section, they have large for men, Correct. I just want to ask that question. We'll pray. We got a lot to discuss. So am I correct? So if you go to boys section, they'll have small, medium, large for boys. Okay. And then adults, they'll have small, medium, large. Okay. Okay. Because uh, guess what? I went to a store and I guess I bought a size large for children. So I'm wearing a size large for children. I figured that they gave me... They didn't tell me it's for children. They th probably thought I got it for my son. I don't have a son. Anyway, but this is what I got. And it is a large, but it's uh, children, WrestleMania 3. See that? WrestleMania 3. Now, uh, amazingly, it fits, but still, because my love handles, it shows too much. I don't want my love handles to show. <laughs> oh, boy. But there you go. See? And I haven't even hit weights. And I don't look ripped. And I have no shoulders. <clears throat> but anyway, you know the rules, right? Yeah, but my love handles. Pray I shrink them and not get vain about it. Hey, bees. Yeah, how you doing? Why don't you go make some honey and get the ladder here? Okay. So get the ladder. All right. You guys know the rules, right? Let me remind you of the rules. The rules are, well, no, I haven't hit weights, Georgina. I just have muscle memory because I used to be a bodybuilder, but my muscles have amnesia. <laughs> The guy who's actually muscular is Zach Mercer. And if he's using steroids, he's going to have to repent because steroids are illegal and it's a sin. So if this guy's using steroids, may the Lord convict him to repent. La, 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 my teeth are yellow. Anyway, so I used to be a bodybuilder in the 90s. So muscle memory, mine's have amnesia. If I do work out for six months, if God gives me the grace discipline, then my muscles will come out again. But the, the problem is when I look bigger, I feel like I'm getting fatter. And that messes my mind. So pray God heal me and destroy my vanity, my pride, my arrogance. Anyway, you know the rules. When the class begins, let the Holy Spirit speak through me. Let me be his mouthpiece. You're not going to help me by posting verses or commenting. You're not going to <clears throat> ask irrelevant questions, nor are you going to come here and think you're better than us and more spiritual than us and condemn us. Because then I'll insult you in your origin. So respect yourself, respect your mothers, respect the channel, fear the Lord, leave us alone if you don't want to be here. Let the Holy Spirit be the teacher, let him work through me. In fact, I even blocked Ortho Q and he complained and he's a patron and I blocked him on Patreon because he doesn't stop. And I kept telling him, stop, he doesn't. He had reached out to me on Patreon saying, hey, I think I'm blocked. I didn't know it was him. I think your mods blocked me. Now I see why. Because he didn't stop. I'm letting you guys know. Stop causing people to stumble. Stop causing me to stumble. Respect the channel. Don't just bark because you think you need to say something to seem relevant. Listen. Engage me when I ask you questions. Let the Spirit work through me. And we are disciples of the Spirit. <clears throat> he is the teacher. I am not your, your teacher. You're not my disciple, right? So respect the rules. Hit the like button. Subscribe and subscribe. And invite folks, and we're going to go in-depth, a lot of in-depth discussion on Jesus Christ as God in flesh, the God-man, God in flesh, Yahweh in flesh, that he's the God-man, God as man, God and man, God who became man, yet one eternal divine person.
<clears throat> we're going to look at some statements made by Dale Tuggy and his debate with James White. And I'll segue to Ali Atay, who's another fraud. He's another Mohammedan narcissist. Now, we want to be careful. We don't want to throw out that term narcissism loosely because then it'll have no meaning. Not everyone's a narcissist. Some have narcissistic tendencies. Others are narcissists. May the Holy Spirit heal us that if we have narcissistic tendencies, if I have them, may he purge me, purge us of it and save us from it and destroy self-deception that we're not deceived, but we truly belong to the Holy Spirit. In fact, that reminds me, I'm going to tag this fake Ali Atai. All right, Ali Atai, oh, yeah, because I want Zaytun to know they got a fraud, a narcissist who tries to impress you because he supposedly knows Hebrew, Arabic, and Greek, and he's a proof. You may know the languages, but you're still a deceiver and a liar and cannot see unless the spirit convicts you and you repent. So let me just do this. One second. I want to make sure they get tagged. All right. And pray. I'm not a distraction to the people here in Jesus name. And the Holy Spirit destroys all distractions from Satan, all distractions from the evil spirits. May the Holy Spirit surround us with a wall of fire from his glorious presence. Surround our loved ones. My daughter is their mother with a wall of fire from the Holy Spirit. May the Holy Spirit destroy demons manifesting, silence dogs, chasten them, teach them to fear the Lord, and give us miraculous safety, security, protection, and health for all of us, for my daughters, their mother, our loved ones. May the Holy Spirit be pleased to use me as his mouthpiece, <clears throat> that he's the teacher. May he destroy all our sins, purge our, our flesh, destroy the fruits of our flesh, crucify our flesh, Fill us with his fruit, fill us with his virtues, filled with good deeds from the Holy Spirit to be doers of the word. Practice what we preach. May the Holy Spirit destroy hypocrisy from us, destroy <clears throat> lying from us, destroy every form of blasphemy, idolatry from us. <clears throat> Save us from being deceitful, conniving, wicked, self-centered, selfish. Destroy our pride, our arrogance, our ego. Destroy fake piety, fake humility, fake humbleness. May the Holy Spirit destroy from us jealousy, slander, maliciousness, gossip, and envy. And may the Holy Spirit destroy laziness and slothfulness from us. For the glory of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' almighty name. May the Holy Spirit fill us with the things that he loves. To love what he loves and hate what he hates. Glory to the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' almighty name. To love what he loves and hate what he hates. Glory to the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Rebuke Satan, Father. Rebuke Satan, Lord Jesus. Rebuke Satan, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Yeah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, teach us how to praise our God, pray to our God, how to sing the praises of our God, how to fast, how to... Obey our God, worship our God, and love our God by our deeds and love one another. For your glory, Holy Spirit, for the glory of Jesus, the eternal Son of God, for the glory of the Father. Glory to the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Take over, Holy Spirit, this session. <clears throat> Bless the internet connection, the audio visual qualities. Destroy distractions and agitations. And I ask, Holy Spirit, that you destroy from us double lives. Not to live double lives and be liars and never prostitute ourselves for status, for position, for fame, for money. Destroy our lust for more and our fear of not having enough and give us contentment. And I ask Holy Spirit, the gifts you give me for ministry, perfect them in me to use them lawfully to magnify the Father, to magnify the Lord Jesus Christ, to magnify you, Holy Spirit, and to build up and strengthen your church. You don't need us, we need you. <clears throat> and give us the greatest gifts in your sight, perfect faith in our God, hope in our God, and perfect love for our God to sin less and obey the Lord Jesus Christ more, to plunge the depths of Scripture, feast on the meat of Scripture, <clears throat> and that we will be enslaved to your voice in Scripture, transformed, empowered, and in love with your voice in Scripture. And I pray that for my daughters, their mother to submit, our loved ones, they're on all other voices, and beatify us with the beauty of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love, the compassion, the mercy, the graciousness, the patience of the Lord Jesus Christ, the <clears throat> holiness and purity, as well as boldness and fearlessness. Fill us, Holy Spirit, the way you fill the holy prophets, the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ, the early church. No matter what they do to us, if they torture us, beat us, kill us, that you will control our tongues and mouths to only glorify the Lord Jesus Christ and never deny or betray the Lord Jesus Christ and crush Satan on our feet by the blood of Christ. Grant me perfect recall of every jot to the portion of Scripture. 
and save me from error and stammering. <clears throat> Strengthen my throat, my heart, my lungs, my chest and artery, arteries with the health I need and give us miraculous discipline, spiritually and physically, <clears throat> engaging in intense spiritual disciplines and physical disciplines and that I will use my health to serve the church and glorify Jesus Christ. Have your way. Holy Spirit, please heal me in the areas I need healing. Heal us all. Heal me from lust and food addiction so that I can finish the race with integrity and bless all who are here. Increase the numbers for the glory of the Father, for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ, for your glory, and help me to destroy the lies of these liars and blasphemers and take them captive to expose the Otagi and Ali Atai, these frauds who belong to Satan unless they repent. Destroy self-deception from us, that we're not deceived, that we truly know that we belong to you, to the Lord Jesus, to Abba Father. Reveal that to us and help us never to be arrogant about it, but to be humble and teachable. Take over this ministry. Take over this session. Own us. Own our loved ones. Own my daughters and our mother. Possess us fully. We give all to you, Holy Spirit, and we trust you. Glory to the Father, Holy Spirit. Destroy censorship that no one will censor these videos. Open doors that no man can shut. And shut doors of opposition no man can open. We trust in you. Glory to the Father, Holy Spirit. Okay, so I'm here. I just made it. Lord willing, tomorrow I'm going to meet the family. Lord willing, I'm going to meet the family tomorrow. So pray for me. I'm in an area. I guess it's not the best area. I don't know. But we trust in the Lord our God. Yehovah. Yehovah Rapha. Yehovah Rapha. Yehovah Rapha. Father, Son, Spirit. We trust in Lord Jesus Christ. So with that said, let's say the Lord's Prayer. We're going to begin. You're going to learn a lot in this session. You're going to learn about Jesus Christ being the God-man, how to answer questions accurately, Jesus who is God in man, God as man, God who became man, and he doesn't cease to be God in man, God as man, God who became man, but one eternal divine person, one eternal divine person. He didn't become a human person. May the Lord save us from error, from bad theology, and destroy all blasphemy from us. And I have to be honest. I have to be very honest. Uh, James White didn't do as good. It's not that Dale Tuggy is good. He's bad. He's, he's a tool of the devil and a deceiver and a Bible butcher. But James White made him look good because he wasn't good. He was bad. So we will learn from this. Learn from our mistakes. We don't repeat them and learn from our strong points. In the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but those us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, both now and forever unto ages of ages. In the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name we pray. Watch the Lord my God, save the Lord your God. Ooh, long drive. Ooh. Help us to breathe in you, live in you, move in you, have our being in you. And breathe life on us spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, physically. And do that for my daughters, their mother to repent of her adultery and our loved ones. Lord, the Father, the Spirit. All right, we're going to begin. You ready? This is it. This is the best we can do. No matter what, man. Look, <laughs> I don't have white teeth. No matter what you do. Pray I get as lean as I was a year ago. I hope I am. And that I'm just getting bigger because it's muscles. And I can shrink these love handles. Ay vey. Pray for me not to be vain. <laughs> Are we ready? Now we're going to go into the... Now, by the way, if you go to the description box. All right, let me show you. Go to the description box. All the relevant articles, rebuttals for the for this session are in the description box. So let me show you how to get there. Now, guys, you know the rules, right? You know the rules, right? Please focus on me. Only answer me. Do not engage us. Please don't be... Use of the devil. May the Lord perfect our sight spiritually and physically. I'm, I'm excited that I can do a session tonight. I'm here by myself again without my cat. So I can do another three, four hours. Let's see. Okay. Now, let me show you how to find the articles. Let's screen share. Please respect the rules. Please. Do not engage each other. Please. All right. Hold on. Let me do this. No matter what you do, I'm going crazy. I'd rather be alone. All right. Right here. The wrong one, huh? I did the wrong one again. 
All right. Because I'm stupid, guys. Hold on. I'm a special kind of stupid. You know, you know how it is. Yeah. Sure. Okay. No matter what you do, I'm going. Now, this is the one. All right. Okay. So, you know how to get to my channel. So, you go to my channel. <clears throat> All right. I pray no distractions, Father, no distractions, Lord Jesus Christ, no Jackson, Holy Spirit. So you're going to go here, and you're going to look here. Okay, there are the articles. So let's, let's enlarge. All right, there it goes. So the articles are right there. See them? Whole slew of articles right there. In fact, I forgot to add another one. Ive, glory, Father, Spirit, mighty name, Yo, Rafa, Yo, Rafa, Father, Spirit. All right, I'm going to have to update this. But anyway, to give you an idea of some of the articles, okay? Pray the interconnection stays strong. Here it is, one of them, right here, because this is going to come up. Let me enlarge. It's all there. I'm not going to show you all of them. But anyway, you get an idea. Let's do it again one more time. Let's make it really large. Okay, there you go. Because this is going to come up in the debate. I forgot to add two other links. So, Lord Jesus willing, Lord, remind me to add those two other links. Yeah, Rafa, yeah, Rafa, yeah, Rafa. Let's just watch me. Let's see. Lord Jesus Christ, Father, Holy Spirit. Here's why that's called love handles right here. All right. So, are we ready? We're going to now go into the video. So, you get it right there, right? It's all there. You can find it, right? You can find it right here in the description box, right? Description box. So I don't need to show you, right? It's right here. Jesus being tempted. If Jesus got, how could he be tempted? And here's another one. These are some of my older articles. Let me show it to you. So I try to give you articles to help you. It's all in the description box. Take the material, upload them, clip them, translate them, disseminate them, learn the facts, present them accurately, but do not charge. All right? Everyone got it? Okay. Now, with that said, well, let's go to the video. Let's go to the video and play. But before I do that, I have to figure out the timestamp. One second. Let me go now here. I got to go here. Too much to do. Just be patient with me, guys. Stop, stop being haters. Don't hate. Participate. I'd rather be alone. All right. Let me just see her. Okay. This is from... The debate between James White, James White, and Dale Tuggy. We're going to start at the one hour, 26 minute mark. One hour, 26 minute mark. There was another clip, right? Did I miss that? Anyway. All right. One hour, 26 minute mark in the cross examination. Guys, it's going to get meat. You're going to learn how not to answer questions because James White dropped the ball. He didn't do as good. It was very unimpressive. All right, now watch. Holy Spirit, save me from error. Anoint my mouth to glorify Jesus Christ by speaking clearly and not get arrogant or puffed up. So one hour, 26 minute mark, I said. Yep, right here. Let's start right here. Okay, let's go here. Let's see. All right, let's see here. 34. Okay, we'll start a little earlier, okay? Let's start a little earlier. Okay, listen. Asking me why does Jesus say the things that Jesus say, says in the way that he says it. So, uh, yes, Mark's a Trinitarian, but Mark doesn't get to change what Jesus said. And when Jesus responded to the people, that, those are the words that he said. He didn't have to start talking about the Holy Spirit for the Spirit to be relevant. Okay, listen to this. Dr. White, um, the one person Jesus, did he die on the cross? Notice, one person Jesus, did he die? So... Remember, he's one person. He's an eternal divine person. He didn't become a human person. So Jesus is not two persons. He didn't go from being a divine person to a human person. He's a divine person that took to himself a human nature, became human, a human being, became a man without being a human person. Something that the Bible leads us to believe and to conclude, even though we may not understand <clears throat> its <clears throat> glorious beautiful majestic reality because it's something beyond our ability to fully comprehend but keep that in mind yes did yahweh die on the cross uh again if we we're talking about yahweh as to the very being of god 
uh, shared by the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. No, the being of God did not die on a cross. No. Now you want me to show you how to answer it better? Are you listening? May the Holy Spirit save me from error and anoint me and speak through me to bless you and sharpen us and perfect us. And may we never get puffed up. You know, I answer that question. <clears throat> Are you guys ready now? You Trinitarians, you who belong to the historic traditions, the churches, <clears throat> the ancient churches. If someone says, did Yahweh die on the cross? You answer, yes, Yahweh, the son died a human death. Yahweh, the son died on the cross because he died a human death without ceasing to exist. That's the correct way of articulating the answer to the question. You understand what I just said? And I'm going to elaborate on it, but we're going to go slow and I'm going to repeat myself. <clears throat> Did Yahweh die on the cross? Yahweh, the son incarnate, Yahweh, the son in flesh, died a human death without ceasing to be God. That's how you answer it. Are you with me there? Lepanto, everyone. Yahweh, the son in flesh, Yahweh, the son incarnate, died a human death without ceasing to be God. Now, why do you want to keep saying Yahweh, the son? Because... We want to make sure that the people understand we're not saying Yahweh the Father died a human death. Yahweh the Spirit died a human death or the Trinity died a human death because it was Yahweh the Son of Yahweh the Father. He became in flesh and died a human death because that's the only kind of death he could possibly experience. You understand now? You got it now, right? Because to him, because he's a Unitarian tool of Satan, Yahweh is the person of the Father. So if you say Yahweh died, he's going to try to set you up saying, well, Yahweh is in essentially intrinsically immortal. And the Bible identifies that Yahweh is the Father, not Jesus. Or he'll say, but according to you, Yahweh is the Trinity. Okay, with me there? Don't help me, Bart. Just listen and engage me. All right? Because he assumes Unitarianism, he thinks the Bible teaches it. Even though in his warped, demonized mind, he thinks he's proving it from Scripture. The cross, the son who took on a perfect human nature gave that perfect life upon the cross to redeem God's people. So the son died on the cross and Yahweh didn't. Okay, you see it again, the false dichotomy? The son died on the cross, Yahweh didn't. No, Yahweh, the son, died on the cross <clears throat> as a man because that's the only kind of death that Yahweh the Son could experience because Yahweh as Yahweh, Yahweh in respect to his divine nature is spirit, meaning immaterial, incorporeal, beginningless. So Yahweh the Son in flesh, Yahweh the Son as man died on the cross a human death. What's the problem? He didn't cease to exist, though, because that doesn't mean secession of life. And I'm going to prove it. The Lord of glory was crucified, according to Paul's own terminology. Uh, but that is specifically in regards to the incarnate one, not to the Father, not to the Spirit. Yes, of course, it's the man in Romans 5 and many other places that yes, died. Of course, that's what we believe. Yeah. So did the did the human nature die or the eternal divine person? Natures are not what die. Persons who have particular natures die. You understand the point now? Let's go a little deeper. And I'm not a philosopher. I'm not trying to be a philosopher. I'm just trying to understand scripture and articulate scripture correctly by the grace of God's spirit. We don't speak of natures dying. We speak of persons dying, but not <clears throat> every person dies. What do I mean? You have angelic creatures who have angelic nature that will not die. Gabriel won't die. <clears throat> Michael won't die. Not because God cannot wipe them out of existence. He could. Anything that came into being can be wiped out of existence by God. The point is, we speak of persons dying. We don't speak of natures dying. But not every nature 
is such where you can speak of a particular thing with a particular nature dying. Do we speak of rocks dying? You understand my point? I'm trying to be clear. Would it make sense to say rocks die? No. Rocks have existence, substance, nature, but their nature is not such where they die. You with me there? I need you to understand this because we got to go deep. And I don't care about philosophy. I'm just trying to help you understand that there are things, entities that have natures, but because of the particular nature they possess, they don't die. Rock has nature, but rocks don't die. You with me there? So there are particular natures that <clears throat> entail that those who possess those natures can die. Humans can die. They have a nature in which a human person can die. So the nature of a man is such that that person can die. But we don't speak of nature's dying, right? Frank, what did I tell you by not helping me, Frank? Frank, did I not tell you not to help me, Frank? Frank James? Which part of stop chiming in to try to help me is not clear because you're distracting me because when you make a mistake, I got to correct you. Frank, uh, do you want me to get you out of here now? Hold on, guys. I want to see if I could get this guy out of here because a lot of people have no respect for the rules, no matter how many times I tell them. Frank, I want to get let him a chance to speak. Convince me to keep you here because I got to get rid of you because you can't shut up. You have to manifest because your pride is kicking in. Frank, who told you to explain what human death is? And who told you spirits can't die? Spirits can die if God wants to wipe them out of existence. God alone is essentially intrinsically immortal. God alone is such that he cannot cease to exist. Anything else that's created can be wiped out of existence. Their existence depends on God. And God in his grace allows things to continue to exist. But Frank, why did you have to chime in, brother? Okay, I'm going to let you off on that one. So zip the lip, Frank. You're not helping me, man. See, I don't understand what you guys don't get. Yes, human spirits don't cease to exist because of God's graciousness. God has decided that when a man dies physically, the man continues to exist as a disembodied spirit. We're not secessionists. That's not because humans are, by necessity, immortal. Humans came into being and can be wiped out of existence. But God in his grace does not wipe them out of existence. The only being, the only reality that cannot cease to exist and be wiped out of existence is God. Everything else that came into being can be wiped out of existence. See, even here, St. Elias didn't get it. St. Elias. You're a sad human being. You know that, right? Can you change your name? See, he misunderstood everything I said. Am I wasting my time, guys, explaining? Because this guy didn't get it. He just didn't get it, right? St. Elias, St. Charbo, you got to change your name, and I'm going to block you in about five minutes. The person died. St. Charbel, you need to go to Mike Winger, brother. You're going to have to go to I just said, we don't speak of nature's dying. And what did the clown do? He just said, oh, so the flesh died. The godly nature did not die. Sometimes I feel like maybe I shouldn't be teaching these subjects at all. Did you guys understand? I just said, so can, can, he, can you explain? Give me a reason why not to blame uh, St. Charbel for embarrassing himself for not getting it. I just said we don't speak of nature's dying. We speak of persons dying because certain persons die due to the particular nature they have. So, yes, a human dies because the nature he has, human nature, permits humans to die. 
I, I thought I was clear. We speak of persons dying, not natures, because when you speak of natures, then you are confusing the issue and setting yourself up for a trap. Okay, did everyone else get it? No, I don't think you're listening, St. Charbel. I don't think you are. Brother, I repeat myself four or five times, Ruben. How many more times do I to repeat myself? I am patient. I'll repeat my point at least three times, if not four or five times. And if you don't get it after five times, you got to go. Either I'm a terrible communicator or you suck. It's one of the two or both. May the Holy Spirit save me from error and illuminate you. You want me to repeat it 20 times? And we'll be here for 20 hours. Do we understand now what I just said? We speak of persons dying. We don't speak of nature's dying. But it's because humans have a particular nature that allows them to die. Because having human nature means that as a human, I can die because my nature is such that would allow me to die. Therefore, human persons die. Human beings die. Everyone got it now? Rock have nature, right? Do rocks die? All right, we got it now. I repeated it four or five times. Lord, please forgive me, Lord. Have mercy on me. I need to be transformed, Lord. Heal me. Everyone got it now? So I can move on to the next point? Okay, can I get it? Can I move on to the next point? Lepanto, everyone. Well, the, it was the human nature that was given. It was human nature that died. You can only... Human nature that died? So the person didn't die? A human nature did? See the problem? You understand? So the human nature died, but the person didn't die. What are you talking about? No, the person died without ceasing to exist. That's the correct way of saying it. Because what Teggy is assuming is, you die, you cease to exist. No, the person died without ceasing to exist. And that person died a human death because that's the only kind of death he could die because as God, he cannot die. But as God in flesh, God as man, God who became man, that divine person who's not a human person did die a human death without ceasing to exist. You understand now? We got it now? Why your articulation? Everyone with me there? Yeah, Zach is a regular Tony. He's a brother. He's trying to work, work with me. He's, he's for me. Do you understand now why I told you you need to know how to articulate your position? Because he just said, no, the human nature died. Wait, so the person didn't die? So you're not being set up. Oh, so the person didn't die. No, he died. Yeah, but he said the human nature died. You understand what I'm trying to show you? Learn from others' mistakes so you don't repeat them. Because James White is not as great as he thinks he is, and he's not this great debater. He's not as intelligent as he thinks he is, and may God destroy our pride. We don't get full of ourselves. When, it, when, when Paul uses the terminology, they crucified the Lord of glory. You can't crucify the Lord of glory unless the Lord of glory has taken such a form in which that can become a meaningful thing of substitution. Okay, exactly. So... Then say they crucified the human nature of the Lord, Lord of glory. They crucified the Lord of glory. But then he explains, well, the only way you can crucify the Lord of glory if he takes on a form that would make such a thing possible. In other words, yes, the Lord of glory, that one person, did die. But he died a human death because that's the only kind of death he could die. But if he didn't become human, he could not die. See, that's a better way of articulating it, right? You understand? For his people who are united to him. Yes, and we read repeatedly that it was a man who died. So in your view, the human nature that died is a man? See? Yes. Uh -huh. The human nature is a man. Yeah, well, if you're human, you're a man. But what he's trying to set him up is, so if he's a man, then he's a human person. Now, look, he thinks he's smart. So the man died, yeah, because if you're human, then you're either a man or a woman. But in the case of Christ, though he's a man, because he has a human nature, he's not a human person. This is where 
He's trying to set up James White. He wants James White to end up espousing Nestorianism. Pay attention. So he's a man. Yes. So a human person died? Yes. Oh, got you. You said human person. But that's Nestorianism. Now you got two persons. Oops. No, 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 no. No. He became man, but he's not a human person. Yes, it's true that all human beings with a human nature are human persons. But there hasn't been a human being like Christ. Christ is the only human being, the only man, who is an eternal divine person that took to himself a human nature and a physical body to be a human being, but he didn't become a human person. You got it? You got to thank the Holy Spirit, Joseph. Anything I do that is good and accurate, that's the grace of the Holy Spirit. May our God get all the glory. May we decrease and love Jesus perfectly. So pray for me. You understand how he's trying to set him up? See, now you got your answer fine. Be patient and get your answer. That's why I say, Frank James, don't help me, dude. Let me just do it. Trust the Spirit, work through me. Let me be his mouthpiece in this channel. You can teach on your own channel. Did you understand? You see what he's trying to set him up? Because he's going to fall for it. Watch. Watch. He's going to fall for it. And a man, by definition, is a human person? No. A man, by definition, is not a human person because we have an exception, Jesus Christ. Yes, it's true. Every other human being is a human person. But we have one exception in history, Jesus. He is the exception. See the setup? Look. Uh, if you want it, whatever terminology you want to use, I prefer biblical terminology. Like I said, they crucified the Lord of glory. That's the terminology I'll stick with. He didn't even answer the question. He skirted around it. And a man, by definition, human person? No. What do you mean? Because we have an exception. We have one man who, by definition, is a divine person, not a human person. So you are correct, Dale Tuggy, when it comes to the rest of us humans. We are a human person, but Jesus is the exception. He is not identical to us in the sense that though he's truly human and took our human nature, he is completely unique among mankind, humanity, because he's a divine person that became man. You got it? Not only veiled himself in human flesh, YouTube, he... YouTube, Kimberly, just help me, YouTube, by not helping me, Kimberly, please. He became flesh, not just veiled himself in human flesh. Exactly, Isaac. So you got it now? Yeah, he, he, the last four debates, he got smoked. He was terrible. Everyone got it? This is why I decided to discuss this. I didn't really want to go through this, but you know when you will have to drive for six hours? Guess what you do? You got to listen. I made the mistake of listening to this debate again, and then I made the mistake of listening to the post-debate review by Dale Tuggy. I made a mistake because I had six hours and I needed to listen to something. But my mistake will bless you because then it put a fire in my heart to ask the Holy Spirit to help me speak to this issue to help you. All right, everyone got it? Focus, Berto. Please, guys, don't resist your spectral. If you listen and focus, you'll learn. So we got it, right? Okay, let's continue. That's just that's just what anthropos and on air and man mean. It mean they mean a human person. Okay, did you catch that? Okay. Did you hear what he said? Exactly. He said that's just what the words in Greek, anthropos on air mean, a human person. Hear it again. Watch how God makes heretics look stupid and humiliates them. Because James White is being handed over because he's become useless to do his arrogance. He can't catch them. Pay attention. All right. Listen. Well, that's just what the word anthropos means. You heard what he said. The word anthropos, which is a Greek word for human, anir, which is more specific, it would refer to a male, just means a human person, right? Okay, listen. Watch. When I heard this, I go, glory to you, Father. Glory to you, Lord Jesus. Glory to Holy Spirit, how you humiliate these sons of the devil. 
And thank you for giving us wisdom we don't deserve to be used for your glory to silence these blasphemers. Look how, he can, look how he's going to embarrass himself. I use, I prefer biblical terminology. Like I said, the crucified Lord of glory. That's the terminology I'll stick with. I mean, that's, just, that's just what anthropos and on air and man mean. It mean. They mean a human person who's male. Uh, Did you hear it? Human person who's male. Anthropos and Anir, right? You guys want to see how God is going to embarrass him now? Now remember, one hour, 28 minutes, seven second mark. Remember that. Watch here. You want to, you want to see how the Lord just humiliated him? You want to see how the Lord just humiliated him? Your Bible is supernatural because it's truly the Word of God, and God knows the end from the beginning. He's already put the answers to destroy the heretics in his Bible, but we just got to seek the Spirit to find where. Because watch here. Watch here. He said anthropos, right? And an ear means just the human person who's a male. Watch how good our God is. You want to see it? Watch here. John 8, 17 to 18. John 8, 17 to 18. Let me enlarge it a little more. Okay. You guys want to get blown away? Another miraculous confirmation that the Bible is supernatural. It's the word of the true God. I hope Lepanto is listening too. John 8, 17, 18. Okay, watch here. Watch here, guys. Even in your law, it has been written that the witness of two men, two men, is true. Well, who are the two men to confirm that what Jesus is saying is true is not a lie to fulfill his own law? I am he, so I'm one man who bears witness about myself, and the Father who sent me bears witness about me. Jesus just called the Father, or John, writing in Greek, just called the Father anthropos. The very term that Dale Tuggy says means a human person. Did that sink in? Did you guys catch it? Let's see if you caught it. Yeah, can you get Reese out of here, please? Get Reese out of here. Even in your law, it has been written that the witness of two men, I'm going to show you what the Greek is. So here, your law, which I gave you, which you don't realize I'm the one who gave it to you, says two men are required who are liable to verify anything. Well, here are the two men. I am one man that bears witness of me, and the father is the other man. But what's the Greek word? Let's see. Let's hear you see what the Lord did to this uh, demon? Because in their arrogance, they think they know God, but they butcher scripture and rob Jesus' glory, and Jesus exposes and shames them. Here it is, John 8, 17. Anthropos, remember he said? All right. Diu anthropon. Two men, anthropon. So John just called the father an anthropos. There's the link. So does that mean the father is a human person, a male? Okay. Dio, dio, anthropon. What's the word anthropon? Let's see. The very word he said means a human person, anthropos. But because James White is outdated, and I'm going to play clips from their post-debate review, they even said that James White's arguments are stuck in the 90s. It's true. His arguments against Catholicism, Mormonism, Joe's Witnesses, 90s arguments. He has not advanced. He has not progressed. The guy has not improved. May God destroy our pride, keep us humble teachable that we keep growing. He's still in the 90s, using arguments in the 90s that people already know and gone beyond. You see it? Anthropos. So does that mean the father is a human person? Anthropos. Now, the Greek equivalent for the word anir, anir, anir means male, would be ish. Okay, watch. Anir means male and gender. The Hebrew synonym equivalent would be ish. That means male or husband. 
Isha means female or woman, and the Greek equivalent would be uh, gune. Gune. Gune, woman, female, wife, wife, in the Hebrew would be Isha. Isha. Right? You with me there? Everyone got it? But the Greek word anir, and you guys, you Greek speakers can confirm. Anir means male or husband. The Hebrew equivalent is ish. Remember he said, anthropos anir means a human person who's male. All right. You guys ready for this? Okay. Greek speakers, you can confirm, right? We usually have our Greek speakers here. Now watch here. Watch here. All right. Exodus 15, verse 3. Yahweh, oh my goodness, what a terrible translation. Damn, what a disgrace. Shame on you, man. Damn. Here's a little translation. Let's go here. American Standard Version. Exodus 15, 3. Jehovah is a man of war. Jehovah is a man of war. Let's see what the Hebrew word is. Jehovah, right? Whom he says is the father. Okay. Jehovah, Exodus 15, verse 3, is a man of war. Okay, let's see. Exodus 15, verse 3. Yahuwah, ish. There's the word ish. Melchama, ish, war. Yahuwah, shimmu. Ish. Let's see what the word ish is. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother. Ish, right? Let's see. Now, masculine, ish, man. Damn. Really? A man? A husband? Male? Male? No way. Oh, sorry. Really? So is Jehovah a human person, a male person? Is that what he is? Is that what he is? And then we got another problem. Everyone got it? Are you learning? Are you learning? Now watch here. We're going to use King James Version. So if we follow this Bible butcher tool of the devil's argument, Jehovah is a human person, a male person. Especially when he says here, look. Let's see, Hosea 2, 16, 17. I got to find the translation that. Yep, here you go. American Standard Version. And it shall be at that day that say Jehovah that thou shalt call me Ishi. Ish, the word for male or husband, not used of a woman. E, my Ish. And thou shalt call me no more Bali. So if we use this Bible butcher to the devil's argument, Jehovah says, I'm your ish. I'm your man. And ish always refers to the male in gender, the husband, not for the female, the woman. Because that word is isha, female, wife. So that means Jehovah is a human person who's male. Philip. Can someone argue that your mother is not a whore, but is she a prostitute? Because obviously you're not getting it. Because you obviously don't get it. Because if man is a term, not a description, then you idiot that you just prove that the terms must be defined by their context. And it doesn't necessarily prove that the term means you're a human person who's a male. Now get the out here, Philip. Go find your Shia prostitute mother. So we won't call her a whore. We'll just call her a prostitute. Idiots. Yeah, the idiot didn't get it. He's too stupid because he's still shocked. He doesn't know what she had fathered him. Get the out of here, Philip. Everyone got it, right? What's the point for those of you who got it? This moron didn't get it because he's still traumatized. Is my mother a prostitute or a whore of the Shia? Hmm. You got it now. Neither the term ish nor the term anir nor the term anthropos necessarily means a human person who is male. That's the point. The terms must be defined by the context. 
It's how terms are used in a context that we derive their meaning. So Yahweh can be called ish, a term that means male and gender or husband, without being a male, human, human male person. Likewise, the father is called anthropos without him being a human person who is male. Do you understand the point? But this idiot didn't get it. Did everyone get it? You caught it, right? So just because Jesus is called anthropos doesn't mean he's a human person who is a male. Yes, he's a human being who became male and gender, but he's not a human person. Did you get it now? Because James White let him get away with murder. That's the point. Let me repeat. Just like the father being, call, being called Anthropos doesn't mean he's a human person who is a male, a physical male and gender. Likewise, Jesus being called Anthropos doesn't mean he's a human person. Yes, he's a physical male, a physical human being who's male and gender, but not a human person. Everyone got it? Before I move on, I'm doing it for you guys. I hope you're learning. Did you learn? All right. Let's continue then. That's the point. Okay, so let's do this. Hold on. We're, one, one, we're right here. Let's go here again. Divine son, and then you also have a human person. The first one didn't die, but the second one we believe, did die. We believe in the hypostatic union that Jesus Christ is one person with two natures and that he gave that perfect life in behalf of his people. Yes. And we just mentioned two different persons. Now you're back to one person. I don't know what you're talking about when you mentioned two different persons. The Unless two you're talking about the father and the son. Yes, of course, we distinct. I use, I prefer biblical terminology. Right, like I said, the crucified Lord of glory. That's the terminology I'll stick with. I mean, that's just, that's just what anthropos and on air and man mean. It mean. They mean a human person who's male. Uh, right. So you have an eternal divine son, and then you also have a human person. See that? You see what he said? See, he's not listening because remember, What's common among these heretics and cultists and false teachers is their father is the devil, John 8, 44. And if Satan's your father, you will then reflect his character and nature. That's why he says, Jesus says to the Jews, your father is the devil who's a murderer and a liar. That's why you're liars and murderers. Have you noticed the common feature among all these sons of the devil? Even though they may be from different religious backgrounds, but they belong to Satan, they all lie. They all connive, they all use deceit, they all misrepresent because they can't be honest. And if they could, they murder you. At least they're trying to murder you intellectually and spiritually. Did you catch it? And the eternal divine son was a human person. Where did you get that from? The first one didn't die, but the second one we did believe, die. We believe in the hypostatic. The first one didn't die, the second one did die. Do you see why you need to know how to articulate your position? So Christ is an eternal divine son and a human person. The first one, the human person died, but the divine son didn't die. So he's accusing White of Nestorianism. No. The one eternal divine person died a human death. The one eternal divine person became man and died a human death. He died. A human death without ceasing to exist. Hypostatic union that Jesus Christ is one person with two natures and that he gave that perfect life in behalf of his people. Yes. And we just mentioned two different persons. And now you're back to one person. Look at the lie. He just twisted James White's words. We mentioned two different persons. Why? Because you said the eternal divine son and human person. Well, White didn't come out and say human person, but he didn't correct it. See, this is the problem. He never said, yes, I agree with you as a human person. If that's the terminology you want to use, I prefer biblical terminology. This is where he dropped the ball. No, he should have nailed him. No, I did not say he's a human person, dude. He's one eternal divine person. 
who became man and died a human death without ceasing to exist. Where's the problem? None whatsoever. But he's playing games because he's a son of the devil. I don't know what you're talking about when you men mentioned two different persons. The Unless two you're talking about the father and the son. Yes, of course, we distinguish. One, the father one more time. There's an eternal divine person who can't die on your view. And then you also the said there's a complete human nature, which is a man who can die. He there's took, your two persons. He took. No. There's one eternal divine person who cannot die if he doesn't become man. There's one eternal divine person who cannot die if he doesn't become human. Once he becomes flesh, he becomes man, he becomes human. Then that eternal divine person dies a human death without ceasing to be God. See how easy it is? Now you guys are getting it, right? You see how easy it is? I, why did a terrible job here? You see my position. And I'm going to prove to you, Jesus died a human death and didn't cease to exist. Now, it makes sense, right? So I'm helping you. I want you to learn so that you don't get confused by these demons who want to confuse you, right? Yeah, he should stop debating John. I agree with you. He's old, dude. And his arguments in the 90s. He sucks. I'm sorry, Jimmy. Step down, bro. Swallow your pride. May God save me from becoming like that. Now, listen. On, he, he took on a perfect human nature, and that is what died upon the cross, yes. Okay, so it wasn't the death of a man, unlike see? the New Testament repeatedly says. It was the death I, of a complete just, human nature. I don't, I don't even... Did you hear it? See, no. Did you catch what he caught him? So it wasn't the death of a man. It was the death of a complete human nature. This is why I corrected you, Saint Charbel. You just set yourself up. Oh, so it wasn't a man who died, just a complete human nature, huh? So a man didn't die, human nature did. Huh? See? Yes, a man died without ceasing to exist because that man wasn't a human person. He's a divine person, person who became man. You get it? Is it making sense? You got it? I can't move on if you're not getting it. So when here St. Charles, oh yeah, so the flesh died? Uh, not the godly nature? See, you're setting yourself up to look stupid. Here's another guy trying to wax eloquent. I got to get Fernando out of here. Fernando, brother, take it easy. The divine person is still present, dude. What divine nature? The divine person. The person. Person, Fernando. Ah, oh, Fernando. They even sang about you. Everyone got it? All right, let's continue. Thank you, Scott. You, you restored my hope in humanity. Scott got it. I want to kiss his head. Yeah, he died a human death without ceasing to exist because he's a divine person. You got it, brother. I want to kiss your head, dude. He's an eternal divine person. Obviously, he possesses divine nature if he's a divine person. But he became man, human, took on human nature without being a human person. DB, George Lindsay is the one who slept with your whore mother. That she a prostitute whore. Okay, DB, go find your whore mother. See where she's at. Get him out of here. All right, now let's continue. I don't have any idea what you're talking about when you say it was the death of a man. He was truly a man. He was born of, of the virgin. He walked, he ate, so on and so forth. Um, but that man had not existed eternally. See, even that statement, terrible. That man had not existed eternally. I know what he means, but you think Unitarians who may not know or Unitarians who are deceivers are going to want to be charitable and understand what he meant? That man did not exist eternally. What do you mean? That person did not exist eternally? No, you mean he existed eternally. So what do you mean that man did not exist eternally? You mean that person did not eternally exist as a man? Because now you end up with Nestorianism. How? 
if you're saying that man did not exist eternally, then you're now speaking as if Jesus is a human person and as a human person, he did not exist. You see how confused that response was? Yeah, here. Yeah. No, Albin, you're not getting it, buddy. Sit down and listen and don't ask questions. Come, I'll block you for not getting it. Divine presence, huh? My goodness. Lord, have mercy on us and preserve us. Did you hear what he just said? How do you how do you parse that? That man did not exist eternally. You mean that person did not exist eternally? That's blasphemy. Are you saying that divine person did not eternally exist as a man? You'd be right. Are you saying that man did not exist, meaning that human person did not exist eternally? Well, are you saying then when he became man, he became a human person? That's Nestorianism. Did you get it now? Do you understand James White's error here? I can't go on if you don't get it. Kitty, you got to listen from the beginning so you can follow along. I can't go on if you don't get it, brethren. And even when I say divine person, you got this Albanian go, oh, divine presence? The divine presence is in me and you, and we still sin. So Bible student KJV, you're getting it? So I can move on? Even when I use the right terms, and people still don't get it. Divine, well, the divine presence in me, the Holy Spirit's in me, I still sin. No, because he's a divine person, Albanian. My goodness. No, Hax, that's not it either. Was Adam a human person? And was Eve a human person? Yes, and Adam had no father and mother, and Eve had no mother. No, Hex, you're still not getting it. Hex, I got to make an example out of you, brother, because you guys keep chiming in without understanding. So, Hex, you're going to have to get hacked and get the hell out of here. All right, brother? Sorry, man. See? So now, according to his Einstein here, Adam had no father and mother, so he could not have been a human person. Eve wasn't born of a mother, so she cannot be a human person. Now, Hax, I got to make an example out of you because, you see, you couldn't shut up either. You had to comment, right? Did you get him, get him out of here? Right. Okay, bye-bye, Hax. See why I'm not going to have a lot of people? Get him out of here. See? You guys can't stop chiming in and making it longer than it needs to be, so I have to cuss you out and your origins. Don't come back here, buddy. So according to Einstein, genius here, Adam didn't have a father or mother, so he cannot be a human person. Eve didn't have a mother, so she cannot be a human person because you have to have a father and mother to be a human person. This is what you call special kind of stupid on a level that you make Muhammad look intelligent. Do you guys see why I'm running a tight ship? Why we won't go viral? Because I'm very serious and strict and I want the Holy Spirit to work through me to discipline us so we can learn not to make mistakes. You understand this is serious business? People out there to mock you and ridicule you, show you that you're rational and stupid and that your Trinitarian position makes no sense. And you guys can't constrain yourselves from commenting. So I have to correct your errors because you're going to embarrass us like James White did. You got it now, you guys, for the rest of you listening? So according to this idiot... Had Jesus been born of a father and mother, and that's how God wanted him to enter the world, then he would have been a human person. You see how stupid this is? Texas chick. Pins and needles, needles and pins. A happy man is a man that grins. That physical body in human nature of Christ was created. It was created from the holy, consecrated womb, of the Blessed Virgin by the Spirit. Pins and needles. Needles and pins. A happy man is a man that grins.
What am I mad about? Pins and needles, needles and pins. A happy man is a man that grins. What am I mad about? Texas chick, should I block you too, sister? See, she didn't get it either, right? Guys, how many times I said, don't chime in and make comments. Just engage me and answer my questions. What is Texas chick's excuse for staying here now after she now just broke the rule again? It's not the first time she did it, but she's a regular. But just to tell you, I'm an equal opportunist. I get rid of even regulars who are disrespectful. Did I not say do not chime in and pontificate because you're going to make a mistake. I'm going to have to correct you. Texas chick, can you give me a reason why not to block you? You just wasted five minutes of my life when I could have moved on to the next point. I'm waiting for a response. For the rest of you, learning from the examples of the rest, what not to do. Did you now understand the issue and how to explain it and how not to explain it? If you're benefiting and learning, I'll continue. Something. Texas chick, you know I'm going to block you if you don't respond. All I ask is to respect the rules, and I even can't even get that, so they make it harder for me. Is she here? Okay, Texas chick. All right. Okay, let's read it. It was the Son who had existed eternally, who was the creator of all things, as we saw in Revelation. And now notice the confusion here. It sounds Nestorian. I'm not saying he is Nestorian. He sounds, look how he articulated it again. Watch here. Look at the mistake. Watch here. Watch here. Virgin, he walked, he ate, so on and so forth. Um, but that man had not existed eternally. It was that man did not exist eternally. It was the son who had existed eternally, who was the creator of all things, as we saw in Revelation 5, uh, worshipped by all creation. All How does that not sound like Nestorianism? Do you see why some people accuse James White of espousing Nestorianism? I had a brother tell me, James White sounded like an Nestorian. How does that not sound like Nestorianism? That man did not eternally exist, but it was the son that eternally existed. How does that not sound like Nestorianism? Did you catch it? One more time. Now, he's not a Nestorian. He's just sloppy, and he's no good at debating. He's now debating out of arrogance and pride because he wants to have 200 debates, no matter how much he embarrasses himself and others. Listen to it again. Tell me how this does not sound like Nestorianism. Yes. Okay, so it wasn't the death of a man, unlike the New Testament repeatedly says. It was the death of a complete just, human nature. I don't, I don't even have any idea what you're talking about when you say it was the death of a man. He was truly a man. He was born of, of the virgin. He walked, he ate, so on and so forth. Um, but that man had not existed eternally. It was the son who had existed eternally, who was the creator of all things, as we saw in Revelation 5, uh, worshipped by all, create, all creation. How does that not sound like Nestorianism? That man did not exist eternally. It was the son who eternally existed. So the man did not exist. The son did. And you're telling me why people accuse James White of Nestorianism? And he's not a Nestorian. He believes Christ is one eternal person. So I'm trying to be fair. I'm not trying to slander him. But because he's so sloppy and he's so behind the times and his arguments are not as good as he thinks, and he's not this great debater, even though he thinks he is. He's embarrassing himself and the Christian faith. You saw it? Now, let me repeat how you explain your faith. You ready? Are you ready? Yahweh, the Son, to emphasize it wasn't the Father and the Spirit, died a human death without ceasing to be <clears throat> alive. 
without ceasing to be conscious. Number two, that divine person did not eternally exist as a man. That divine person didn't always exist as a man with a human nature. See? See how easy that is? Not that man did not exist eternally. The son exists eternally. Oh, so you have a man and you have a son. That's two persons. Very easy, right? Okay, focus. Yeah, you, yeah. Wow. See? Yeah. See that? He caught him. He's seeing, because he, he's a philosopher. He's, he's setting up James White and James White is getting decimated here. And James White and his arrogance doesn't see it. He thinks he's responding. Wow, yeah, wow, dude, wow. So the man did not exist, but the eternal son did? And you don't see you just posited two persons and you're an historian? See? Yeah, wow. you want to you want to say it this is, is not exegesis, but I mean, you need to go back to the exegetical drawing board if you have a man and an eternal divine person. You you just okay. can't, you just can't follow yeah. that rule. You have a man and eternal divine person. And yet James White thinks he's refuting him. Can you pray for one, one another and me not to be this proud and arrogant and the Lord keep us humble and love the Lord and obey him? Be doers of the word and remain humble. Now you understand why I'm strict. Do you understand why I'm strict, why I'm harsh, why I'm being so tough and rebuking you guys? Because we're not playing games here. This is a deep issue. And if you don't lend me your ear and let the Holy Spirit work through me and then ask the Spirit to constrain you to listen, you're going to embarrass yourselves? And you see why I'm repeating myself 50,000 times? All right? I got to be tough, dude. Especially when I tell you don't chime in. Don't chime in. You see how I caught him here? Now we're going to go to his next objection. No, Candace, James White cannot stand me because I call him out. No, brother, I'm not smarter than you, St. Charbel. See, this is another thing you got to stop. Let me remind you. I was thrown out of high school, only got a GD, no college, no seminary, no university, but the Holy Spirit filling me fills you. The same spirit in me is in you, and I pray we belong to the true spirit of God. He loves you just as much as me. All it is is discipline, slow to speak, quick to listen, slow to anger. That's all. Shh. Let the Spirit use me to bless you with the wisdom he's given me so it's now yours so you can learn. I'm not more loved. The Spirit doesn't love me more than you, and I'm not more special. This is a fact, and I mean it. Why do you think you're here? Because now the Spirit wants to give you the wisdom. But if you're talking, yeah, 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 you're not going to learn. Right? So now, before we go to the next point, before we go to the next point, hold on. We got a guy distracting me. We got to do this. Hold on. Hold on. Let me show you what the Bible says. You ready? Okay. James 1, 19 to 20. James 1, 19 to 20. James 1, 19 to 20. Know this, my beloved brothers. But everyone must be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. For the anger man does not achieve the righteousness of God. If it's unrighteous, unholy anger. Because Ephesians 4, 26, 27 says, there's righteous, holy indignation, zeal for the glory of God, which our Lord Jesus himself perfectly exhibited when he was on earth. What did it say? Slow to speak. Quick to hear and slow to anger. James 1, 19 to 20. Capish? Capish? Sinks in? No, and his arrogance dying, he actually did uh, DL going through Hebrews 1, and he thinks he, he did great. He's too arrogant. He's a narcissist. And I'm being honest. I know the man. He's got narcissistic personality disorder. So now, guys, listen. 
Okay, you got it, right? Let me show it again. But everyone must be quick to hear. That's why you got two ears and one mouth, not two mouths. Slow to speak and slow to anger. Right? All right. Now let's go back. Now let me show you the proof. What did I keep saying? The eternal divine person, Yahweh the Son, died a human death without ceasing to exist, without ceasing to be God. So when they ask you, did God die? Yes, God died as a man. God died a human death without ceasing to be God. You get it? Now repeat how you answer it. Hey, Sam, did God die? Well, if you're referring to Jesus, because the Father, Spirit, did not become human. Yes, Jesus is God who died a human death, died as a man without ceasing to exist. Where are you getting this from? Well, let me show you. Let me show you where I'm getting from. That he was still alive, consciously alive, preserving his body, and then raising it back to life with the Father and the Spirit. The Father and the Spirit did it together as a one God. Here, let me show you. So you don't think I'm making it up. Even his opponents heard him say something to that effect, but didn't recall it perfectly, right? And twisted his words. I'll show it to you. John 2, 19 and 22. John 2, 19 and 22. Jesus answered them, destroy the sanctuary, and in three days, I will raise it up. Well, if he's dead... And he sees us to be consciously alive. How does he raise his body up? The Jews then said, now they misunderstood him. They thought he's talking about the temple. It took 46 years to build a sanctuary. And will you, you raise it up in three days? You're going to do it? But he was speaking about the sanctuary of his body. So when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he said this. And they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had spoken. Everyone got it? So I just proved to you what I just said. Jesus Christ is the God man. And as God, he, this God of ours, died. Our God, Jesus Christ, died. God died a human death. Died as a man without ceasing to exist. Because here he's telling you he's sovereign and alive even when his body is dead. And he's preserving his body in the tomb. And on the third day, he then raises up his body and glorifies it. But he didn't do it by himself. He did it with the Father and the Spirit. Because when the Father acts, the Son acts, the Spirit acts. That's why in one place he'll say the Father raised them. Another place say the Spirit raised them. The Trinity. You see why I said, listen, let me help you, man. Learn from my mistakes and mistakes of others. John 10, 17, 18. Here, again. John 10, 17, 18. For this reason, the Father loves me. Because I lay down my life so that I may take it again. So he gave it up and he'll take it up again. How? If he ceased to exist. No one takes it away from me. That sure sounds like he thinks he's almighty. And there is no power that can rival his. He is supreme, and his power is supreme over every created thing. But for myself, I lay it down. I lay it down of my own will. I have authority to lay it down, lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This command, right? This command, this command meant I received from my father. So my father told me. To come into the world and voluntarily die to save mankind. And I obey him because we are perfect and inseparable. His will is my will and the Spirit's will. Yes, Father, with great delight. No one can take my life from me. No one can even get near me. I can wipe you out of existence with one word. But I voluntarily allow you to put me to death. And then I will raise my physical body and glorify it. Everyone got it? Okay, now you want proof? 
that Jesus could not die if he didn't want to die and no one could get near him? Here, let me prove it to you. John 18, verses 4 to 6. He even shows you that by his word, he can wipe you out of existence, slay you dead, or by his word, give you life. Why? Because when they came to arrest him, watch. Look, he proves what he just said. And I'm going to show you no one can take my life. You can't even get near me because it's my word that's sustaining creation. Father and I in spirit, we are preserving and giving life to all creatures by our commandment. So if I don't want you to touch me, I can wipe you out. Here's the proof. John 18, verses 4 to 6. John 18, verses 4 to 6. Because James White thinks he has the best arguments. Okay, John 18, verse 4 to 6. Here it is. James White thinks he has the best arguments. He doesn't need, he's at a point, he's unteachable, Splout. You can't teach him. He is better than you, more knowledgeable than you, and knows more Greek than you. John 18, verses 4 to 6. Can you pray for me and one another that we don't get to that point? So Jesus, knowing all the things that were coming upon him, went forth and said to them, Whom do you seek? They answered, Jesus the Nazarene. Now watch. Here he gives you miraculous proof. You can't even get near me. It's because my voice, my command is preserving you alive. And that same voice command can wipe you out. That's how powerful I am. Because I'm one with the Father and the Spirit. Watch here. He said to them, I am he. And Judas also was betraying him, was standing with them. So when he said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. He knocked them down, knocked them backwards to the ground just by his words to prove his point. John 18, verses 4 to 6. You got it? You see? So what I told you is biblical. Yahweh, God, the Son, died a human death, because that's the only kind of death he can die without ceasing to exist, without ceasing to be God. Yahweh, God, the Son, died as a man without ceasing to exist. Short to the point. Did your God die? If you mean the Son, my God did die. How? He died as a man. He died. God that died a human death without ceasing to exist. Okay, now what's the objection, Tuggy? What's the objection, Tuggy? Yep, Judas fell back. And then even his enemies remembered these words of his, but twisted them in order to try to condemn him to death. What do I mean? Watch here. Even his enemies remembered he had said this, but they twisted the words, changed what he actually said in order to accuse him of blasphemy. What do I mean here? Mark 14, 57 to 58. Are you enjoying this session? 15 to 29. You see why I say stop chiming in? Guys, I'm not trying to be a jerk or mean to you guys, but I'll be a jerk and mean if you're not listening. You're not helping me. You're making it harder. Here, Mark 14, 57 to 58. Here, Mark 14, 57, 58. And some standing up were giving false testimony against him. Now, you got to understand what a false testimony is and isn't. A false testimony doesn't mean just making up a lie about you. It can mean that. But a false testimony means a hostile witness who wants to catch you by hook or crook, and wants to make you look bad, like Dale Tuggy did with James White. That's what a false testimony witness is. And a false testimony means someone can take what you said and twist your words so that they end up having you say something you didn't say in that exact manner in order to make you look as evil as possible. So Jesus did say something like this, but not the way they repeated it. What do I mean? We ourselves heard him say, I will destroy the sanctuary made with hands. I'm going to destroy this temple that was made by physical hands. And in three days, I will build another made without hands. See how they twisted his words? Number one, he didn't say, I'm going to destroy the temple. He goes, destroy this temple and I will raise it up in three days. 
Because he wasn't talking about the temple in Jerusalem. He was talking about his body. Come and destroy my temple, and I will raise it up in three days. But you see how they twisted it? They had him saying he would destroy the physical temple in Jerusalem that was made by human hands and raise up a new temple in three days. You caught it? You got it? He said to them, you destroy this temple and I will raise it up in three days. My body. They didn't understand it. So then they ended up twisting words saying, look, he even said he's going to destroy the temple in Jerusalem made by human hands and raise up a new one in its place in three days. That's not what he said, you liars. And then on the cross, they mock him and taunt him for it. And you know what's ironic? As they're taunting him, as he's dying on the cross, they're fulfilling his actual words. And it's they're so blind and stupid, because Satan has blinded him like he's blinded Dale Tuggy, they don't see it. Because he said, you're going to destroy this temple, and I'm going to raise it up three days. And as they had him killed on the cross, they were literally fulfilling his actual words. And they were so blind, they didn't see it. What do I mean? Mark 15, 29. And those passing by were blaspheming him shaking their heads and saying, ha, you are going to destroy the sanctuary build and rebuild in three days. And in their stupidity, here they are actually fulfilling his actual words that they would have him killed. Oh, shit, I'm not too loud. So they were actually fulfilling his words because here he was on the cross and they were destroying the actual temple he's speaking about, his body. And they're so blind they didn't see it. Mark 15, 29. Okay, do you see how to answer the question, how not to answer the question? Mark 15, 14, 57, 58, and Mark 15, 29. Everyone got it? Okay. Let's go to the other point I want to respond. I may have to do... I may have to do Ali Atai tomorrow because if this takes me two hours, then I'll do it tomorrow. So don't worry, we'll get to Ali Atai. Just pray that I'm not a distraction and I don't get distracted in Jesus' name. All right, now let's go back. The other point I want to address. Yes, sir. I want to ask you about Mark 13 32. Man, there's noise here. Yeah, I hope there's not someone next door. All right, let's go right here. About temptation. And, and an eternal divine person. You, you, just okay. can't, you just can't follow that rule, can you? Has Yah Dr. White, has Yahweh ever been tempted to do wrong? Is Yahweh ever tempted to do wrong? Mm -hmm. uh, as, as God, no. Okay. That is technically true. But let me explain a better way of articulating it. Yes, Yahweh has been tempted to do wrong when he became man. You caught it? Yes, Yahweh became tempted to do wrong and sin when he became man. See, that's a better way. Okay? Now watch. So what James White said is not wrong, but the better way is, oh, yes, Yahweh can be tempted to do wrong when he became man. Well, that's the entire teaching New Testament. What are you not getting, Dale? Jesus is Yahweh. So since Jesus was tempted by Satan to sin against the Father, that means, yes, Yahweh can be tempted to do wrong when he became man because Jesus is Yahweh. What are you not getting? You see how that easy that is? Do you see how easy that was? Yeah. Yeah, Yahweh can be tempted to do wrong when he became man. Because Jesus is Yahweh who became man and Satan tempted Yahweh as a man to do wrong. See how simple it is? And then he's going to bring up James 1.13, which I want to refute because I have articles on this. Is that a yes or a no? As God knows? Is that just no? Well, uh, because obviously uh, Bible teaches us that the second person of the Trinity became flesh 
and experienced temptation as we all did. So we just allow all the Bible to speak, not just the part, certain parts. Yeah, see, so he's answering it that way, but he could have been much more clear and more explicit. So he's saying what I just said. Yes, second person of the Trinity, who is Yahweh, when he became flesh, was tempted. So yeah, but God as God, tempted to do wrong, even that needs to be qualified. Okay, now let me go a little deeper. Can God as God, without becoming flesh, be tempted to do wrong? Yes and no. Okay, you see how deep it is? Let me blow you away. Okay, can God as God be tempted to do wrong? Yes and no. What do I mean yes and no? Even can Yahweh as man be tempted to do wrong? Yes and no. Because here's where these Bible butchers don't get it. Okay. What do you mean by tempted? There's two ways you can be tempted. I've done sessions on this and I showed you the articles. I'll show it to you again. There's two ways you can be tempted. Externally, someone tempting you, right? Seeking to tempt you to do something. And internally, an inherent desire <clears throat> that causes you to be tempted to do something. You understand what I'm saying? You got to listen because we have a clip that Archive uploaded where I'm answering that question. And I showed you the articles and I'm going to bring them up again. But I need you to listen and stay focused. There are two ways you can be tempted. Outside, external to yourself. Inside, internal to yourself. For example, someone can tempt me to inject heroin. He's tempting me to do wrong. But there's nothing within me. I have no desire to do heroin. I'll laugh at They'll say, get the hell out of here. Someone can tempt me to have sex with a man. But there's nothing within me, no desire for me to want to have sex with a man. I'll be repulsed at that idea. You catch it, right? But now let me tell you about temptation that's eternal because of a desire within me. Temptation that's eternal because of a desire within me. I love food and I struggle with <clears throat> desiring women. All right. Okay. So if you bring deep dish sausage pizza on my day, that's not a cheat day. I will be struggling and anagonizing agonizing, fighting myself not to give in. If a woman comes in front of me and she's dropped dead gorgeous and she takes off her clothes, I'll be crying out in tears to God, save me because I'll be burning with lust to do something. Do you understand the difference, right? Do you understand the difference? So let me show you the articles again. So if you ask me, can Yahweh... As God, be tempted. Yes and no, depending on what you mean. Can Yahweh as man be tempted? Yes and no, depending on what you mean. What are you saying? Yes, Yahweh as God has been tempted many times. But because Yahweh is pure and holy and immutable, and his desires are perfect, impeccable, immutable, no matter how many times you tempt him, there's nothing within Yahweh that would move him to succumb. He has no desires that would make him susceptible, prone to succumbing to temptation. So all the temptations are outwardly. Are you with me there? And that's in all my articles. Here, let me show you. Let's go back and show you the articles. I've written on this. I've done sessions on this. Here. Here, right here. One article. And I did one on response to... Tovia Singer. Here, let's go through my article so you don't think I'm lying. It's all there. Description box. So remember that 129 minute, 55 second mark. Well, let him finish this point, And we're going to go through it uh, thoroughly destroying this objection. All right. Hold on. Let, let, let him finish this point. Let me see how many minutes is it. And then we go into Aliyatai for a few minutes. I hope you're enjoying this and why I'm strict. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a few more minutes here. A few more seconds. All right. So 
Yahweh has never been tempted to do wrong, but Jesus obviously has, according to Mark and Matthew. Yahweh has never been tempted to do wrong. You see how the false dichotomy? Okay, watch here. As as God, no. Is that a yes or a no? As God, no? Is that just no? Well, uh, because obviously the uh, Bible teaches us that the second person of the Trinity became flesh and experienced temptation as we all did. So we just allow all the Bible to speak, not just the part, certain parts. All right. So Yahweh has never been tempted to do wrong, but Jesus obviously has, according to Mark and Matthew. Because of the incarnation, the very thing that you don't accept. Right. Yes, and where, where, what part did they tell you that it was because of the incarnation that Jesus... John 1.14, the Word became flesh, dwelt among us. Well, then, of course, the description in Hebrews chapter 2, the person of the Trinity became flesh and experienced temptation as we all did. So we just allow all the Bible to speak, not just the part, certain parts. All right, so Yahweh has never been tempted to do wrong, but Jesus obviously has, wrong. according to Mark and Matthew. That's because why. Yahweh has been tempted to do wrong. Even as Yahweh... Because Yahweh has been tempted throughout the Old Testament, and Yahweh as flesh, as man, has been tempted. You see again the false dichotomy? Yahweh has never been tempted to do wrong, but Jesus was tempted. Hold on. What are you not getting? What are you not getting? Jesus is Yahweh. If Jesus is Yahweh, and he is, then Yahweh has been tempted to do wrong, but he is sinless. Because he has no inherent desire that would make him susceptible and prone to succumbing. So do you understand my position, Dale? Yahweh, the son, Jesus, Yahweh in the flesh has been tempted to do wrong. So yes, Yahweh can be tempted to do wrong, but he won't succumb. He is distinguishing Jesus from Yahweh, assuming his position without proving it. He keeps saying Yahweh is the father alone. Moreover, in the Old Testament, Yahweh, as God, even before he became man, has been tempted by his people <clears throat> and yet never succumbed. I'll get there. But you understand the dishonesty, the gross misrepresentation, distortion of what we believe? As the incarnation, the very thing that you don't accept. Right. Yes, and where, where, what part did they tell you that it was because of the incarnation that Jesus... John 1.14. The word became flesh, dwelt among us. Then, of course, the description in Hebrews chapter 2 of Jesus being the one who has brothers uh, and his death is in behalf of those uh, brothers and other passages like that. Colossians would go into the similar topic. Okay. Yes, and Hebrews 2 is a great cure for thinking that Hebrews 1 uh, teaches a divine Christ. All right. Dr. Dr. White. Yes, he keeps doing that. He talks out of turn. Hold on. Now make sure you get the articles for you. One second, guys. Let me get there. One second, guys. Let me get it for you. All right. Let me get it right here. And we're going to see. And one of my older articles, one of the first objections I answered. Here it is. It's in the description box. Are you ready? You ready now? Okay. Here it is in my article. It's been there for years. Uh, Catherine, I don't know what you mean, the Father is separate. Catherine, if you've been here long enough, then you know we teach the Father is not the Son. The Son is not the Spirit. Spirit's not the Father. And they're distinct, not separate. Distinct persons, but are inseparable. And so, yes, the Father is not the Son, but the Father and the Son are Yahweh. So I don't know what you're saying, Catherine. I hope you're not dropping the ball. I hope you're not misunderstanding what we believe. That means you're wasting your time here. You're not listening. All right, now, here it is, the article. Let's go through it. All right, let's go through it. The Bible says that God cannot be tempted, James 1.13. And yet Jesus said to have been tempted by the devil no less, Matthew 4.1. Doesn't this prove that Jesus is not God? James is not denying the fact that God can be tempted in some sense. Now watch, this is why you got to know context. In order to know what James exactly meant, we quote the immediate context. Here, it's there. This is one of my older articles, dude. I answered this years ago. Let no one say when he's tempted, I'm being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, and he himself does not tempt anyone. Now, you may misunderstand what he means. What do you mean cannot be tempted by evil? Externally or internally? He explains it here. But each one is tempted when he's carried away and enticed by his own lust. Do you understand what he means? Cannot be tempted. 
It's right there. Justin, you got to get the hell out of here because you're a modalistic bastard. A uh, modalist, anti trinitarian bastard. Body, soul, and spirit is modalism, not Trinitarianism. You satanic bastard. Now get out of here. All right, everyone got it? What kind of temptation is James talking about? Internal desires that would cause you to be prone and susceptible to temptation. God has none of those. Then when lust has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And when sin is accomplished, it brings forth death. Did you catch it? By the way, I'm going to show you verses that in your translation will be either translated as tested, test, or tempt. Right? Tempted. Know this, that in Hebrew and Greek, it's the same word. Bible student, King James Version, you're going to have an advantage here. The same words in these verses are translated test or tempt, depending on your translation, but it's the same words. It's the same words. That's why I use a translation that will show you that the word can be rendered test or tempt. And here you go, right there, voila, right there in the article. James is referring to evil inclinations, sinful desires that causes a person to be tempted in sin. Since God has no evil inclinations, no lustful feelings or sinful desires. It is not possible for God to be tempted to sin. That's what he's talking about. God is completely good and holy. What James is basically saying is that only God has no desire to do anything that is sinful. Yet this doesn't mean, and I'm going to give you the proof, that fallen creatures cannot tempt God since the Holy Scriptures clearly teach that many have tried to tempt God and failed miserably. Here you go. Keep in mind. The words here, tempt, another translation will be under test, but it's the same word in Hebrew and Greek for the word tempt or test. Okay, Exodus 17, verses 1 and 2. Then all the congregation of the children of Israel set out on their journey from the wilderness of sin, according to the commandment of the Lord, and camped in Raphadim. But there was no water for the people to drink. Therefore, the people contended with Moses and said, Give us water that we may drink. So Moses said to them, why do you contend with me? Why do you tempt the Lord? Don't take my word for it. Tempt, test, and these verses are from the same words. Some translations will translate it as tempt, others as test. Exactly, Alban. Alban. Now you got it, brother. You got it, my man. Light switch went on. If you had been doing what I've been telling you guys, go watch my older sessions. Go read the articles. 99% of the objections have been answered. I don't know what more to tell you. This is one of my older articles. It's over 15 years old, I believe. Over 15 years old. It's been there for 15 years. Okay, now, Numbers 14.22. Numbers 14.22. Because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracles, which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness, and have tempted me these ten times. Say what? Yahweh was tempted ten times, but at this time in history, he was not flesh. Are you kidding me? And have not hearkened to my voice. What? Yahweh? You're kidding me. Now watch Job 2, how powerful this is. Did you know Satan incited and moved Yahweh to permit Satan to destroy Job? And the word incited is the same word used for Satan inciting David to sin against God? I'm going to show it to you. Pay attention. I'm going to blow you away. Okay, I'm going to blow you away. Just be patient. Okay, watch here. On another day, the angels came to present themselves before the Lord Yahuwah, and Satan also came with them to present himself before him. And the Lord Yahuwah said to Satan, Where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord Yahuwah, From roaming through the earth and going back and forth in it. Then the Lord Yahuwah 
said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. And he still maintains his integrity, though you, are you kidding me, Dale Tuggy? In heaven, where God is glorious and his glory is visibly seen on his throne in a visible shape, even though God by nature is formless, there in heaven, Satan entered and tempted Yahweh and incited Yahweh in heaven. And you have a problem with Satan tempting Yahweh when he's on earth as a man? You inconsistent hypocrite. If there's any place that you could not try Yahweh, it's in heaven when he's in his glory. And this is the very place where Satan came and incited him. And Yahweh said it. Look, Yahweh said it. You incited me against him to ruin him without any reason. So if Yahweh can still be God, and be incited by Satan while he's in heaven. How dare you use Satan tempting Jesus as a proof that he's not God when Jesus has now taken on human flesh, though sinless, but weak and decaying. And then he glorifies it at the resurrection. See the dishonesty of this man? Yeah, we're going to end it with Del Tagi. I'll do Aliyate tomorrow, Lord willing. Lord willing. You caught it? Now, you want to really get blown away? I'm going to come back to Job in a minute. Let me just finish it. Hebrews 3, verses 8 to 9. Harden not your hearts as in the provocation and the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me. This is Yahweh speaking. Your fathers tempted me and provoked me and saw my work 40 years. Now, guys, you want to get blown away even more? Because Dale Tuggy doesn't think the Holy Spirit is a person. Acts 5, 9, even the Holy Spirit has been tempted. And Ananias Sapphire tempted the Holy Spirit by thinking they could lie to the Holy Spirit and get away with it. Acts 5, 9. Then Peter said unto her, how is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Wait, the Holy Spirit was also tempted? So Yahweh was tempted in the Old Testament. He was tempted by Satan when he was in heaven. The spirit of Yahweh, the Lord, is tempted. And you got a problem with Jesus, God in the flesh, being tempted? So you left it. Praise God, Fernando. You caught it? Now watch, though. You want to get blown away? Uh-oh. We're going to come back to this article. Uh-oh, watch here. Let me show you something. Remember when Jesus says, when Jesus says to Satan, the following. And we're now going to use King James because the other translation will tend to as test. Okay, King James, watch here. Here's what people don't realize. Matthew 4, 7. Jesus said unto him, it is written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God, right? Okay. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Here's what people don't know what Jesus was quoting. Get ready, guys. We're going to go out with a bang. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Now, here's where I'm going to blow you away in a second. Uh-oh. Get ready to be blown away. All right. All in my articles, but I want to show you something. Get ready. Anyway, Deuteronomy 6, 16. Remember, Jesus quoted this. You shall not tempt the Lord your God as ye tempted him in Massa. Irony of ironies. The very verse that Jesus quoted, you shall not tempt the Lord your God, goes on to say, like you tempted him previously. Are you kidding me? The verse that Jesus quoted is a warning. Don't you tempt me again like you did previously, showing that the very verse shows they were tempting God? So stop doing it? Deuteronomy 6.16? You got it, guys, or no? Yeah, I like you, though. Too loud. 
Okay. Now you guys really want to get blown away. You guys really want to get blown away? Really, really, really? Satan tempted Jesus in the desert, in the wilderness, right? Satan tempted Jesus in the desert, in the wilderness, right? Okay. Psalm 106, verse 14. Psalm 106, 14. But lusted exceedingly in the wilderness and tempted God in the desert. Psalm 106, 14. Tempted God in the desert. Hmm. Sure sounds familiar. Yahweh God was tempted in the desert by Israel, and Jesus was tempted in the desert by Satan. Hmm. Things to make you go, hmm. You got it. Hmm. Psalm 106, verse 14. Hmm. Things to make you go, hmm. But now you want to see the obliteration? Yeah, you got it, Eek. Almost sounds like Jesus is God. In other words, Jesus has been tempted from the beginning. The same God whom they tempted in the Old Testament, they tempted when he was on earth in the flesh, and they continue to tempt to this day. Isn't that ironic? Oh, but now watch the knockout. You ready for the knockout? Oh, oh. Remember, at this time in the Old Testament, Yahweh is not a man. He's not on earth. Yahweh is God and didn't take on human nature. He's spirit. Now watch where Satan is going to incite Yahweh. Remember this verse, Job 2, 3? And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? This is in heaven. Yahweh is appearing in visible form, visible glory, visibly seated on a throne. And Satan has the audacity to go before him in heaven and incite him. Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil, and still he holdeth fast his integrity? Although thou, you, moved me, incited me against him? How could Satan have that kind of influence to move God in heaven to allow Satan to destroy Job? Now, here's where you're going to get blown away. Pay attention here. You, Satan, moved me, incited me against him to allow you to destroy him. Now, the same word, guess where it's used? Uh-oh. First Chronicles 21, verse 1. Same word. And Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. Just like Satan provoked David on earth, he provoked Yahweh in heaven. And I'm going to prove to you it's the same word. First Chronicles 21, verse 1. Let me prove to you it's the same word. You ready? So you guys don't think I'm lying. So if Jesus can't be God, because on earth... Being man, experiencing genuine human weakness and limitation, yet still truly God and impeccable and absolutely pure, was tempted by Satan. Then Yahweh can't be God because he was tempted all throughout the Old Testament, in the desert and in heaven, by Satan himself while he's in heaven. See what Tuggy just did? He just disproved the deity of Yahweh. Now, if you don't think it's the same word here, Job 2.3. Job 2 3. The articles are in the description box. We'll do Ale Ate tomorrow, guys. It's already two hours. I hope you don't mind. Ale Ate can wait, Lord willing. And then eventually I get to James White and Atonement. Here, guys, you don't believe me, right? Okay, because you know, yeah, blameless and shuns evil. Does that great? Although you incited me. You see here? Incited me. Okay, let's see what the word is. Incited me. Okay incited me right now let's go here is it the same word sooth okay let's see if it's used in first chronicles 21 1 incited me all right watch let's see there's a link for the word let's see where it appears let's see where it appears first chronicles 21 1 the same word in 1 Chronicles 21, 1, where it says, Satan provoked, incited David to sin against God by numbering Israel, showing his trust was in his numbers, not in God. 
same word as in Job? Let's see. Job 2, 3. There it is. And there's the link. There you go. There you go. Lord willing, I'll do a session this week. Why would Satan tempt Jesus if he knew Jesus is God? Well, you got an answer. Why would Satan tempt Yahweh and incite Yahweh to allow Satan to destroy Job if he knew Yahweh is God and Yahweh is in heaven, not on earth as a man? You see, that proves too much, doesn't it? That proves too much, right? If you're going to say, well, why would Satan tempt Jesus if he knew he's God? Same reason Satan incited, provoked, tempted Yahweh while Yahweh is in heaven in glory, not even on, on earth. Does that mean Yahweh isn't God? You got it now? Did you learn? We had a good crowd, over 400. Lord, increase the numbers for your praise, not for my glory. For your glory, not for my praise. You learned a lot. And it's already two hours, so we'll do Aliyate tomorrow. Again, you owe it to yourselves to read the articles. Reread them. Watch the sessions. Rewatch them. And go back and watch the older sessions until it becomes second nature. And then you owe it to the Lord Jesus to share the arguments accurately. And you owe it to the Lord to now teach it. If you do your part and you teach your family, whether your parents, your spouses, siblings, relatives, and children, and you teach your neighbors and do this in your church, I promise you by the Holy Spirit, no one will ever doubt the Trinity. No one will ever doubt that Jesus is God Almighty in the flesh, risen physically, bodily, return. If they leave, it's not because they haven't heard the truth explained and lies destroyed. It's because of other issues. But when we don't catechize them, we give them an excuse. So out of your love for the Lord, learn the material, share them accurately. And you have my material. Upload them, translate them, clip them, but learn them. Make them your own and teach them. If you don't, then the Lord will hold you accountable. Right? Jay Jai, just a month ago, did a full one in my time. From Trinity, Trinity, Trinity. Good. Praise God. So you're now a Trinitarian from being a non-Trinitarian. Now, I hope you learn. These heretics, Dale Tuggy, Ali Atai, Dan McLennan, all have the same father, Satan. That's why they're liars, they're butcherers, they're connivers, they're deceivers, they're filthy. No matter how articulate they sound or nice, because Satan masquerades as an angel of light. Don't be deceived by their rhetoric. They are sons of the devil from the pit of hell. And if they don't repent, the Lord will humiliate them. Now, if you love me for the sake of the Lord, you're going to pray for me that I don't get proud, puffed up, and arrogant. I don't succumb to sin, never fall into any scandal, never succumb to lust, never whore myself for money. But to be a man of holiness and purity and humble and teachable and zealous and bold and practice what I preach until I die for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. I don't end up like James White. And the Lord convict him to repent. Pray for my daughters and I. Ask the Lord to grant us miraculous safety, security, protection, and the health I need to get healthier and save me from obesity and arrogance and vanity. And my daughters to be healthy. And they fall in love with Jesus. And the Lord do the miracle to bring them to me. And I raise them. And please pray for the support to do full-time ministry. PayPal, Patreon, I don't lose support. But never prostitute myself for support. Be a man of integrity and trust the Lord and finish the race. And if the Lord hears your prayers... I'll continue to teach you till I die or until the Lord returns. May he return sooner and later. Lord willing, I'll do another session tomorrow. But tomorrow's a big day. I'm going to meet this person. This person so in love, it's going to take a miracle of the Lord Jesus to knock some sense into them. The person's about to leave to Saudi Arabia on April 8th and destroy their life. For love with a Muslim, I'm going to marry that Muslim. Pray for miraculous intervention. And Lord willing, I'll report back to you afterwards. And I'll try to do a session before. We love you, Father. We love you, Lord Jesus Christ. Yahweh in the flesh. We love you, Holy Spirit. Destroy all errors in us. Destroy all our sins. And empower us to know your word. Live it out. Articulate it. 
perfectly and love you with perfect obedience. And grant that to our loved ones, my daughters, their mother to repent of her adultery and bring my daughters from Martin, Simon, Yaakov and wash us in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and fill us with the Spirit. We thank you, Lord. We love you. We glorify you. Father, Son, and Spirit. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will return physically and bodily. Amen. Come, Yahuwah, Yehovah, Jesus, the Lord Jesus, Jehovah in the flesh, one with the Father and Spirit, our Lord, our God, our Savior. We love you. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to the Father and the Spirit. In Jesus' name, Maranatha. See you soon.